Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Can everybody hear me okay? I'm honestly not used to speaking into microphones like this. Normally my voice carries pretty far, but I'm going to go ahead and give this a try. So welcome to Civicon London 2015. Excited to see everybody here today. Um, before we get into this, the welcome and the state of Civi CRM, just a little bit of housekeeping. So let's be aware of the fire exits. Uh, I guess they're marked with the green signs um, above the doorways. I think everybody probably realizes that better than I do, not being from the UK. <clears throat> Please review your program. There's, these two, next two days are pretty packed full of uh, sessions, lightning talks. Uh, there's an extension showcase and, of course, birds of a feather. If you don't have a program, um, ask for one. We can probably set you up. Likewise, there is a uh, website, responsive website, with all of the session information on it as well. Lunch and drinks are in the main exhibition area, not downstairs in the main lobby, okay, just to be clear. And then the wristbands that you have in your bags are for the drink party tonight, which is down at the Cornet, which I understand is a Weatherspoons bar, and there's some significance to that that's supposed to be funny. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I'd like to have a big round of applause for our sponsors, uh, Circle Interactive, CompuCorp, NFP Services, and Veda Consulting. Not only have these organizations helped make CiviCon possible, each and every one of these is also a partner with CiviCRM. And what that means is, is that beyond just sponsoring this event, they actually financially contribute to the project and ensure that it is sustainable for everybody to use uh, today and going forward in the future. We also have a silver sponsor with Bitemark. And we have a handful of bronze sponsors with Civi Co-op, Civi Go, GMCVO databases, Northbridge Digital, and White Fuse Media. Again, another round of applause, please. <laughs> Similar to our gold sponsors, each and every one of these bronze sponsors is also a partner with Civi CRM. So we appreciate their ongoing financial support. And last but not least, our party sponsor, Yodi, and our lunch sponsor, uh, both today, uh, Google. Ah, I was, I was waiting for that. Finally, uh, thanks to all of the volunteers that helped make this happen. Civi CRM, as everybody knows, is an open source project, so we rely heavily on volunteer participation. Uh, so these folks here uh, have really gone above and beyond to help make CiviCon happen. So a final round of applause is in order. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take the next 15 to 20 minutes to go over uh, the state of Civi CRM, the state of the project, uh, and then I'll introduce our keynote speaker. Um, just a little bit of background. Um, a couple uh, weeks ago, I was at the uh, DC User Summit, the User Summit in Washington, DC, I should say, and I ran into a handful of folks that really had no idea that there was a core team. Um, literally, I met with them and said, I'm with the core team, and they said, what's the core team? So I thought it might be a good idea to stick this in here. Um, so before I explain this, can I get a show of hands as to how many people this is their first CiviCon? So quite a few, okay. And how many people have never heard of the core team? A handful, okay. So Civi CRM is a California-based limited liability company. Um, and what that means is, is that we are not a nonprofit organization. We're a limited liability company that acts like a not-for-profit, meaning that we're not in it for the profit. We're not in it for the corporate jets and the stock options, uh, which we don't have. Um, all of the funding that we receive flows through and into the actual product development. 
There's six full-time equivalents across three countries, and everybody on the core team, with the exception of me, is very technical. Uh, they have strong technical skills. So if you ever have any question, a technical question about the project, do not ask me, okay? <laughs> uh, we're spread across three countries, the United States, Spain, and India. And our primary task is project coordination and product development. Um, I don't want to oversimplify that. It's a, it's a huge task coordinating this entire community and coordinating this project. There are four of us here at Civicon, uh, Karund, Michael, Tim, and myself. Um, if you see us, please pull us aside, chat with us, get to know us. So when CiviCRM was started, this was the vision, and this continues to be the vision today, and that is that every organization, regardless of size, should have access to an amazing CRM, okay? Now, I highlighted the word access in red because I want to talk a little bit more about that in this presentation. This continues to be our mission today. Around the first of the year, we started, we've been collecting statistics, very basic uh, stats on how CiviCRM is used for a while. Uh, but we've been knee deep in the project so much so that we haven't necessarily put the statistics together until around the first of the year. With the help of another partner, we pulled everything together and started watching the number of active installations, the number of donations that were being managed. And right around April, these are the numbers that came up. These are the numbers that we presented at CiviCon Denver, uh, which was at the end of April. And originally, we felt like we expected to see somewhere around 8,000 active installations. And so in the weeks leading up to Denver, we were like, wow, it's, it's really climbing. It, it really didn't seem to be slowing down. But it did. It plateaued right around 9,700, 9,800 organizations. And we're at that same level today. So we've, we've sort of plateaued. And so that's a challenge that we as a community uh, want to tackle going forward. We believe CiviCRM is an amazing product, um, but I highlighted that word access in red because going forward, that should be our focus. That number should be 97,000 organizations. And it's our job as a community to make certain that it gets distributed and that it gets in the hands of all of the organizations that are out there. And there are a lot of nonprofits. I'm sure, as everybody knows, there are a ton of nonprofits uh, that could benefit from CiviCRM. So that's one challenge. But we have other challenges as both a project and a community as well. Um, I'm actually fairly new to open source. I've been with the core team for uh, a little over a year. And I've learned a lot about open source. And I think I've only scratched the surface, to be honest. Um, has anybody ever run a major volunteer-based project? Nobody? Oh, well then, OK, one individual. It's, uh, it can be very challenging. It can be very difficult to pull volunteers together to instill a common vision and mission and to coordinate resources to make certain that everything is executed properly. That's one of the weaknesses of open source. Uh, and it's always a struggle, and we deal with it every day. We also have a funding gap. We, for 2015, we're about two-thirds complete with our budget, okay? Um, that's not uncommon in open source projects. Um, however, a lot of open source projects typically have a corporate funder. Think of like MySQL, which is owned by uh, Oracle, I believe. So they have significant corporate backing to keep that project moving forward. CVCRM is unique in that there is no corporate funder. There is no, uh, as we like to say in America, sugar daddy out there that completely funds the project. So we, we really rely on the community to pitch in and make certain that the project keeps going. Now I wanna point out that the three challenges that I've presented right here, none of these are technical challenges. These are all challenges that the community can tackle without any coding at all. These are all challenges that go beyond just the product itself. We are very positive about CiviCRM, and I've listed three reasons, and we're gonna 
focus heavily on the last two, the project momentum and a clear sense of purpose. But I wanted to point out that open source is actually, uh, in addition to being difficult, it's a real strength. The Linux Foundation recently came out with a really nice video. It's on their website. Uh, you can check it out. And they, they sort of use this term distributed genius, meaning that uh, a collaborative effort is more powerful than anything on the planet. It's more powerful than competition. And so in their view, open source is the way forward for a number of different projects. And naturally, we feel the same with Civi CRM. So we're very happy with the open source model. Project momentum, I'm going to go into that here in the next few slides to discuss, uh, to talk about where Civi CRM is going and what we're seeing at a, at a fairly top level. And then we'll end with a sense of purpose. So open source, uh, kind of touched on this a little bit. Um, one of the things that I like to say is that it's more than just free, as in it doesn't cost anything. It's free for you to use. It's free for you to share. It's free for you to promote. It's free for you to modify and redistribute. That's a very powerful thing. A lot of proprietary software, you, you just don't have those same freedoms. Like I said, the Linux Foundation is espousing that collaboration is more powerful than competition. Look at how many people are in the room. Everybody here has the ability to participate and give back to the project, and everybody, every other person can benefit from that gift. So participation is everything in open source. So as far as project momentum, again, we'll keep this at a fairly top level. Um, this is what we're seeing, and this is one of the reasons why we're excited. Uh, we're seeing more pull requests, more site registrations come through civicrm.org. Uh, we expect that to increase with the newly launched website that went live last night. Uh, we're seeing more events. We had uh, CiviCon in Amsterdam and CiviCon in Madrid this year. Um, we've made the successful change to Stack Exchange, and that's picking up momentum. Uh, more inquiries, more large organizations are inquiring about CiviCRM. Um, protecting their data, owning their data is important to them, so they're taking a very close look at CiviCRM's capabilities. And more openness and transparency. We've been publishing more content, content to the website about the structure of CiviCRM, who's on it, how we operate, our roadmap, where we're going. So going forward, there'll be even more transparency in the project. More extensions. Uh, I've seen a rash of extensions over the past few weeks. Um, if you follow along on the blog, you should see those as well. Uh, but lots of new extensions out there that enhance Civi CRM for everybody. So that's very positive. And more support. And this is sort of my domain. So I'm, I'm happy to see some of this. We've seen a 20% growth in the partner program. And as I said, partners help sustain the project overall. They contribute financially to ensure that the project keeps moving forward for everybody's benefit. About a year ago, we launched a member program, which is for end-user organizations to give back. Um, we today have more members than ever before, which I'm very happy about. The growth has been somewhat slow on that, but we're, we're moving forward. We think it's a great opportunity for end-users to, to give back and support the project for everybody. Likewise, we launched a technology sponsor program, and this is for, for companies that um, like with the extensions, whether it's MailChimp or Stripe or some other third-party business that benefits from integration with Civi CRM, they have an opportunity to help uh, fund Civi CRM as well. Uh, we have a couple already, like IATS Payments, uh, PayPal, uh, Civi SMTP. And we're also seeing more direct support from individuals, and that we feel will grow into the future. And if you've been paying attention to the blog, I think we're up to Alpha 3, version 4.7. Uh, so that's right around the corner. Some exciting improvements uh, in version 4.7. So now I want to talk about why. And so this gets us into the, the sense of purpose uh, for Civi CRM. And uh, even as non-technical people, we have a tendency to focus on other questions, like how do we do something? What is it we're trying to do? And we tend to 
oftentimes skip over the why. And I'm reminded of why about 200 times a day because I have a two and a half year old son. And <laughs> this is the only question he asks, okay? It's never how, it's never what. I tell him we need to change his diaper, and he asks why. So I'm like, really? We need to eat. Why? I never ask why when we need to eat. I'm always ready. <laughs> I think this is a really important question, and it speaks to the heart of Civi CRM. Why do we do what we do? Why is everybody in this room? Why does everybody use Civi CRM? And if we distill it down, we distill it down to a single sentence and talk about our actual purpose. We're not talking about features. We're not talking about 4.7 or a new release. We're talking about the fact that CiviCRM is here because it believes that nonprofit organizations and civic sector organizations need good quality tools to achieve their mission. We just happen to do it by creating an open source CRM. But our purpose is to make, is to help organizations have meaningful impact across the world. It's a very noble mission. We're not here to raise our stock price. We're not here for profit. We're not here for any other reason other than to make each end user organization more effective. I, for one, am very excited to be a part of that and to be a part of Civi CRM. We have other organizations that use Civi CRM. We have very large organizations that do tremendous work around the world that help support Civi CRM in various capacities. And we have very small organizations, some without any budget at all, that give back to Civi CRM. that are located, again, all over the world. So we have 9,700 active installations. And these are a handful uh, that I've displayed. And we want to see these numbers grow. These folks, particularly on this screen, for example, have given back financially to support the project. These are all members of Civi CRM. Th their financial contribution benefits everybody. The one in the top left, I know for a fact, has a budget of zero. It's actually minus $216 right now because they joined as a Civi CRM member. They get it. They understand the purpose of Civi CRM. And I hope everybody will walk away from CiviCon this year and believe in that purpose and want to contribute and want to participate as the project moves forward. So when we talk about the state of Civi CRM, I believe there's a lot to be excited about. And you can ask any core team member for additional details and, very, uh, and specifics. But in our view, regardless of our challenges, which really aren't technical, regardless of our challenges, the state of Civi CRM, it is as healthy and as vibrant as everybody in this room chooses it to be. And all you have to do is participate in some capacity or another, whether it's volunteering for an event, signing up as a membership, creating a new event, working on documentation, whatever. There are a ton of ways to get involved and ensure that Civi CRM keeps growing and improving for everybody. Thank you for listening, thank you for participating, and thank you for being here at CiviCon London. <laughs>